respected faculty members, dear participants, scholars, students. Assalamu alaikum. Very good afternoon and a warm welcome to all of you to this one day seminar on theme Changing Dynamics of Law in Contemporary World. At the outset, I bring warm greetings and a warm welcome to our worthy guests, dignitaries, and participants from the School of Law, University of Kashmir. Personally, it is my pleasure to be here this afternoon to moderate the ongoing session at this very important occasion of official opening of the seminar titled as Changing Dynamics of Law in Contemporary World. This seminar has been organized keeping in view the rapid pace with which the line of our legal system are being shaped and reshaped. As the theme of this seminar signifies the thrust of this one day intellectually stimulating exercise is to deliberate upon the legal developments in the contemporary world and untidy factors which have played a very important role in changing the legislative landscape. One of the credible factors that may account for these rapid changes could be the fact that legal system have undergone a change to respond to the ever-increasing societal needs for the laws to regulate those aspects of the human activities which were outside the sweep of the conventional legal regime. World over, the policy makers and the legislators are bringing a new set of policies and legislative enactments to regulate a scale of human activities, not only in the realm of the physical space, but more importantly, in the virtual world. As a consequence, an entirely new legal regime has come to force. A cursory look at the statute books and the case laws would bring home the fact that there is a paradigm shift in the jurisprudence related to criminal law, commercial law, and the constitutional law. Keeping in view the changing semantics of the legal order, would the school of the law conceive with the idea of organizing this one day seminar with the constructive object of affording the legal scholars a platform to deliberate upon such a virtual theme. At the time of conceiving this seminar, we had not expected such an overwhelming response. However, to our pleasant surprise, we have over 40 legal scholars presenting their papers on varied aspects related to the theme of this seminar. It is my earnest hope that this seminar will be highly beneficial in not offering our scholars a real opportunity to deliberate upon such an essential theme. But more importantly, this one day exercise can serve as a catalyst for promoting research in those areas of the law which have hitherto remained unexplored over to their contemporaneous nature. As you know that with the change and progress in modern, in mankind, law has also changed and progressed. In the primitive societies, people used to regulate their behavior through cooperative agreements and negotiations. And wherever agreements were not possible, coercion and force played a role of law to enable social and economic activities to be ordered in the society. As societies evolved from close-knit kinship groups to larger and more diverse communities and activities became more complex, the need for more formal rules increased. 
in modern societies and states, law serves three critical governance rules. First, it is through law and legal institutions that states seek to order the behavior of individuals and organizations so that economic and social policies are converted into outcomes. Second, law defines the structure of government by ordering power, that is, establishing and distributing authority and power among government actors and between the citizens and the state. And third, law also serves to order contestation by providing substantive and procedural tools needed to promote accountability, resolve disputes peacefully, and change the rules. It has long been established that the rule of law, which at its core requires the government officials and citizens be bound by and act consistently with the law, is the very basis of the good governance needed to realize full social and economic potential. Empirical studies have revealed the importance of law and legal institutions to improve the functioning of specific institutions, exchange growth, promote secure property rights, improve access to credit, and deliver justice in society. As everyday experience makes it clear, however, mere existence of formal laws by no means leads to their intended effects. In many developing countries, the laws on the books are just that. They remain unimplemented, or they are selectively implemented, or sometimes they are impossible to implement. Governments may be unable to enact good laws, that is, those reflecting the first best policy, or good laws may lead to bad outcomes, and law itself may be used as a means of perpetuating insecurity, stagnation, inequality. For example, as you know, for decades, South Africa sustained a brutal system of apartheid rooted in law. It also has become common for political leaders in illiberal regimes to legitimize non-democratic rule through changes to the constitution, everyday actions that exert power over others, such as displacing the poor from their land, detaining dissidents, and denying equal opportunities to women and minorities are taken within the authority of the law. Law can be a double-edged sword again. Although it may serve to reinforce prevailing social and economic relations, it can also be a powerful tool to those seeking to resist, challenge, and transform those relations. At the local, national, and global levels, states, elites, and citizens increasingly turn to law as an important tool for bargaining, and shining and challenging norms, policies, and their implementation. Law and science are close allies. Law believes in certainty. When science establishes or discovers a certainty, law start, starts to extend its cooperation to science to regulate that certainty, but advises science not to destabilize the accepted, agreed age-old norms. For example, when biotechnology said it can help in creating similar man and woman through existing human genetic material, law applied breaks to respect nature. The artificial intelligence and machine learning has also been considerably digested by law. Today, around 39% of in-house legal work in Western countries is performed through artificial intelligence. Algorithms are new forms of rules that help us computers to analyze data. Even disputes are now settled by artificial intelligence. Cars are driven 
without drivers at the steering wheels. However, if an accident occurs because of <coughs> such cars, who will be at fault and liable? Law has yet to find an answer to such types of uh, scientific developments. New internet wars at global level. For example, the alleged cyber hacking by Iran in Albania have posed new challenges to law. To conclude law in whatsoever form it has evolved, be it state-made law, socially evolved customs, or the religious law, or even the forceless international law, the legal pluralism has been dynamic in shaping orderly societies and state of nature, respond to transformation and globalization. It is under the shelter of law that lacks of women and children have ventured to migrate during war time from Ukraine to Russia itself, which was not a possibility a century before. And it is only the fear of law and rather the dominance of law which has uh, made the people to migrate to an enemy country otherwise. To conclude, justice is the main interest of man on earth. The law has been dynamic in trying to preserve justness, fairness, and righteousness of the established systems and their guiding norms. When we look at the dynamism, uh, just a scattered thoughts, scattered thoughts in a sense that it has not left any space for me to be free. If, especially when we look at its dynamism, you know, we see the concepts and the philanthropies uh, about its dynamism, about the justice. We started from the retributive, we reach it to rehabilitative, and then why nowadays we are talking about restorative. We started from retributive, we in between uh, saw the rehabilitative, and now we are talking about restorative. It means a lot and it tells us a lot about its dynamism. That you see the criminal law justice system. It is not, you cannot sum up a dynamism of the law in one page, it is an ocean. You see the dynamics in the changing rule of law. You cannot ignore Shaira Banu's case, where the Supreme Court has come up very clearly that you cannot do anything uh, as a gender speciality to your partner, which is not, which maybe, maybe has been well maintained throughout centuries by way of tradition, by the custom, but no, we are putting an end to it. Shaira Banu is an example. And then the, uh, the ensuring the, uh, the uh, rights of the minorities allowing them to enter into temples, etc., etc. We actually are the witness to the changing dynamics, dynamics of the rule of law. Rule of law. We are witness to the changing dy dynamics of the uh, constitutional interpretation. We are witness to the changing dynamics of the personal laws, as I mentioned, the Shaira Banu's case. We are witness to the changing dynamics of the corporate law and corporate governance, including the liberalization of trade and the uh, unanimity of the laws across the globe. We are losing the nationality concepts and then we are assuming day by day the global concepts so far the, so far the uh, uh, dynamism is concerned. We are becoming more global. We are becoming more of a nation in a global sense. And then when we look at the changing dynamics of the economic laws and reforms, this is a sea change. And then when we look at the overall presence of the legal order, dynamism everywhere, not only one aspect, one sphere of the law, and last but not least, the dynamism of the judicial inquiries. Everybody sees it day in and day out. We see day in and day out that how the judicial, the attitude of judicial inquiries has changed, the judicial process has changed. And we have traversed from modern period and entered into postmodern era. Living generation of postmodern era, somewhere called as vastical studies, somewhere called in law we called as critical studies. And then we have turned our attention to different aspects. And it is going to grab us more and more. 
and to keep us more and more under this control. With these few words, I think the technical sessions would come up with, with very good suggestions and inputs uh, about the dynamics. Uh, I wish the seminar, all the success, and uh, the uh, presenters all the best in their presentations. Thank you and thank you all. The topic today's the changing dynamics of law is uh, we always say that the concept of being static and concept of being dynamic is always a debatable issue. And when we see that the society is always, we cannot hope that a society can be static. We always say that everything is dynamic. So the nature. And when we talk of the law, we see that there are new issues. We see the cyber law has come up very recently, not very recently here in our valley, but uh, cyber law is there, which has, which, has, which has given new challenges to the uh, to, to the lawyers and the legal luminaries. And same is true with the other aspects coming up out of the societies. It is a topic which is related to the changing dynamics of law. What Yasin Saab and other colleagues were saying that uh, any uh, any formulation of law it depends on the on the uh, on the grassroots level or uh, on the empirical studies which have been conducted by the by the scholars or the legal luminaries. So my request and my advice to the research scholars now they are uh, they are they are enough in number in the in the department of law. My advice and my request also will be to the students and scholars of the department of law that the uh, research they will be undertaking it should be we say that uh, we normally say objectivity used to be maintained in research and i hope that absolute objectivity rather to be maintained in in whether it is an empirical or whether it is an theoretical research conducted with research cause that an absolute objectivity should be should be maintained because we see that ultimately uh, ultimately it is a matter of life or death of, a, of an individual of an individual in the court of law which will determine uh, his or her fate department of law or school of law has its history not only in our university but in our ut as a very important and dynamic department. It has produced so many great personalities working not only in our UT or in our place at national or even at the international level. So there is no doubt that faculty of law has immensely contributed towards the development and framing the personalities of our youth, whether it's the present faculty or the faculty uh, which has retired. But I must say uh, there has been immense contribution from our faculty of law towards framing the overall uh, development of the uh, students. But I would definitely uh, have my observation. Uh, please, in future, try to rope in other departments also uh, for these types of activities. Maybe uh, this is research oriented, and uh, some specific deliberations or sessions are meant for the uh, research scholars of the students of law only. But I would definitely like you come out of the four walls of this department. We have beautiful venues, your Ibn Khaldun uh, Auditorium, our Gandhi Bhavan, our EMMRC, which can be utilized for such type of activities so that even your students feel that, uh, you know, they are out from their department and uh, it gives them good feeling also when uh, any type of event is organized uh, outside the department. Uh, I had earlier also said, let's have an activity on uh, convention on the elimination of all forms of discrimination against women. Let it be a national level seminar 
uh, at my personal end, whatever connections I have, I'm sure the senior faculty here also can get good resource persons. Believe me, it will be a very fruitful and useful activity if we are able to have this seminar at national level. And um, I'm very happy uh, to see, um, you know, as my personal observations uh, since uh, I'm, since I've been working in this university uh, as a female, I don't know why. Uh, I always like when girls participate in activities, they do good research work. Uh, I can see that, uh, you know, whenever files come to me pertaining the declaration of results, PhD results or MPhil results, I have seen that very good topics, uh, you know, uh, girls and even uh, boys too from this uh, department. But uh, I'm, again, my observation is, uh, let's see if there are any policy implications of uh, this research because I am sure that uh, the topic which has been uh, chosen today uh, also has the policy implications because that gives the visibility uh, to the department. I remember long time back uh, when I organized a seminar pertaining to domestic violence awareness of police and media. After a week or so, Domestic Violence Act was implemented in the state of JNK. So when you uh, provide that platform, make people aware, make the functionaries aware, it definitely helps in uh, enforcing the law agencies to implement, which is not in force. And uh, for uh, research activities and for extension activities, I will definitely uh, tell the department and the senior faculty and all faculty of uh, School of Law, please be connected with the community. Uh, although I do see some of the files where you, are, uh, you do the extension activities, but I think your department has got such a scope to be connected to have extension activities, especially for the uh, community, because uh, it will not only help the department, it will help uh, our university also for our accreditation. Could be uh, small, small programs, uh, legal awareness, uh, amongst the adolescent girls, legal awareness amongst, uh, you know, college girls, legal awareness at the community level, uh, and so on, so that uh, we really get, uh, you know, uh, connected.